As long as you can afford to buy one, there has never been a better time to get behind the wheel of a new EV. More countries than ever before are offering financial incentives to encourage people to dump the pump and plug in. More governments are offering tax breaks and abatements designed to encourage automakers, parts suppliers and associated industries to go all in with EVs. And for the first time in history, it feels as if people have woken up to the need for public charging to be ubiquitous, reliable and easy to use. So why then, as more and more EVs are hitting our roads and EV adoption rates are heading towards double digits in even the most staunch of gas-guzzling markets, are automakers starting to backpedal? The answer, unfortunately, is complicated. There are many people to blame. And sadly, the most frustrating thing is that every time an automaker plays the blame game, fewer EVs hit the road. A few years ago, about the time that most mainstream automakers started to really take the concept of EVs seriously, either because they were being made to by legislation or because they were fearful of losing the market share to Tesla, nearly every major company announced that they would be investing billions of dollars in transitioning their fleet to an all-electric future. Or perhaps at least offering a comprehensive lineup in the markets where new internal combustion engine vehicle sales were soon to be banned. Ford turned its back on the Ford Focus Electric, a compliance car sold in large enough volumes in key markets to avoid hefty emissions fines, and announced the much better Ford Mustang Mark E. General Motors, just a few years into production of its Bolt EV, started to drop hints about a new electric vehicle platform that would eventually underpin vehicles like the Hummer EV, Equinox EV, bright truck delivery vehicles, and many more. The Volkswagen Group, parent company of Volkswagen cars Audi, Porsche, Skoda, Seat and Cupra, began production of its ID3, the first of a range of new ID-badged all-electric models that would be sold under different monikers within different trim options for many of its sub-brands. Porsche, working with Audi, unveiled the J1 platform, a platform that would go on to underpin various Porsche Taycan models and Audi's flagship e-tron GT. And Hyundai Kia Genesis? It unveiled its new eGMP platform, one of the first new electric vehicle architectures capable of 800 volt fast charging in a package capable of accommodating a range of different battery packs, drivetrain configurations and price points. I could go on, but I won't. For every new platform and every new model, their respective automakers promised massive investments into both new and revamped production lines. They announced partnerships with the battery manufacturers and most of them, one way or another, made either thinly veiled threats against Tesla's supremacy in the EV marketplace or made grandiose statements promising that they alone would dominate the marketplace. All except Toyota, which has remained pretty steadfast against electric vehicles for the majority of the last 20 years. Even when it was making electric vehicles, often under apparent duress, Toyota's never really embraced the whole battery electric thing, and it shows. Heck, even all American V8-loving Jeep and its sister brands Dodge, Chrysler and Ram have embraced the idea of EVs more than Toyota. Fast forward to today. And we're hearing automaker after automaker line up and push back against their original stated plans. General Motors has confirmed that it's rolling back the start of production on electric pickup trucks at the Orion production facility where the Chevrolet Bolt and Bolt EUV are currently made. Locals, I hope I've got the pronunciation right. I've been trying really hard on that one. Ford has started to talk about adjusting production volumes for all of its electric vehicles in production today. The Mustang Mark E, E Transit and F-150 Lightning pickup truck. Volkswagen has cut its production guidance for EVs and even Tesla appears to be second guessing some of its plans, including a new gigafactory in Mexico. I could probably go on, but I think the message is clear. After promising massive EV production pushes, automakers are now backtracking. In some way or another, things don't look rosy. So what's going on? From a 50,000 foot view, these announcements and changes of direction can be given six main root causes, I think. The ongoing EV price war, part shortages within the industry, the impacts of industrial action, automakers' desire to make money for their shareholders, a lack of preparedness on the auto industry's part, and the current economic climate in the US and around the world. And while there are some that would argue that automakers' distastes for EVs comes into it and we should never trust legacy auto, uh, 
Look, I'm going to tackle that as part of the other things on the list. Let's start with the EV price war. It's been ongoing now for some time, and different automakers have responded to it in different ways. After pretty much every automaker, including Tesla, pushed the prices of their vehicles up during the first few years of COVID, we've seen a reversal of that in the last year, with Tesla leading and others following. We've seen many automakers drop the prices of their vehicles to try and remain competitive in the marketplace, with some dropping their prices more than others. And while some might be tempted to blame the price war on Tesla, it's certainly been able to have more flexibility in pricing than a lot of its competitors, it's worth noting that outside of North America, the global EV price war has been spearheaded in a large part by Chinese automakers, which is why there's currently a European Union investigation into prices of Chinese-made EVs. Without delving too deep into it, the People's Republic of China, which subsidizes domestic EV production, has made it possible for Chinese automakers to be better positioned to lower their prices without suffering long-term consequences. Add in the fact that most Chinese-made vehicles have lower production costs due to lower labor rates, and it creates massive pressure on companies outside of the PRC to match the prices of made-in-China ones. In North America, where the impacts of the Chinese EV price war are less obvious, Tesla has been the primary driving force behind price cuts. But since it does also make and sell cars both in China and export MIC, or made in China cars, to other countries around the world, it still does get to benefit somewhat from the current advantages that Chinese-made EVs enjoy. Let's go to parts. It's no secret right now that there is a massive amount of disruption in the parts industry around the world, caused by a whole slew of issues. Initially, problems were caused by the early years of COVID, where automakers and parts suppliers changed their orders for electronic components, component manufacturers responded by taking on more orders from other industries, and basically it's taken a long time to get things back on an even keel. But it's not just microprocessors either. The ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine has dramatically impacted the supply of certain components, such as wiring looms. And that has, again, disrupted what was previously a pretty steady and stable supply chain. But of course, at the heart of this is battery packs. There aren't as many battery production facilities as automakers need to bring all of those new promised EVs to market. Automakers have been promising all kinds of joint ventures over the last few years, and the US government has laid out some pretty big incentives designed to encourage domestic refining of raw materials needed for EV battery pack production, not to mention massive incentives for customers who purchase EVs from US automakers that produce their vehicles in the US with US made and refined battery packs. But those facilities take a long time to build. And even in an ideal world where production facilities had already come online, it wouldn't directly solve all of the issues we're seeing today. For example, China has just recently announced all graphite exports from the country will be subjected to heavy export tariffs. Graphite, a key component in every modern EV battery pack, is found in many countries around the world and is refined in many different ones. However, just two years ago, nearly 80% of the world's natural graphite was produced in China, despite China only holding around 22% of the world's natural deposits. Which brings me to the next key point industrial action. Lots has been said in the media about the UAW strike against the Detroit Big Three, GM, Ford and Stellantis. But there's also been a huge amount of disinformation being spread. At the heart of the industrial action was a call for automakers to release union workers from agreements they entered into more than a decade ago during the last major recession that detrimentally lowered any potential salary increases among shop floor workers. The strike was about disparity in salary increases between company CEOs and shop floor workers, and it was about working conditions, pension funding and healthcare provisions. It was about automakers raking in record profits while workers were struggling to make rent and mortgage payments. It was also, in some form or another, about fears that the transition to electric vehicles would result in more layoffs. Not, as some media reported, because auto industry workers point blank, did not want to make EVs. 
With all three automakers now entering into agreements with the UAW on improved conditions and remuneration, we've also seen some key agreements pertaining to EV battery production becoming unionized. This will help those displaced from ICE production lines find a new job making EV battery packs with union protections. All of that, though, has an impact on the automaker's bottom line. Which brings me to the next key factor in this, shareholders. Shareholders expect companies they've invested in to make money. And while I would love to think that many shareholders are ethical sorts who wouldn't mind taking a hit on their return of investment so we can have cleaner, greener, safer, smarter, more equitable forms of transport, I would be kidding myself if that were universally true. Because it's not. Sure, there's a growing number of so-called activist investors who acquire shareholding in companies purely so they can influence the company's direction. But most care about one thing, and one thing only. Money. Lots and lots of money. Automakers are, frankly, terrified of their shareholders. They are beholden to their shareholders. And I'm sure some auto industry executives like it that way. Whatever floats your boat. But cut profits, making fancy new electric vehicles, and you're going to hurt on the stock market. And that's going to affect your company's bottom line even further. It is also worth noting here that CEOs own their salaries to shareholders. They're the ones who vote on how much a company CEO should be paid. They're the ones who decide exactly who should be in charge of a company and they can dramatically influence a company's direction. You only have to look at the pro-EV former CEO of Volkswagen, Dr. Herbert Diess, and his rapid departure from the company a few years ago to learn that shareholders and the board of directors who represent those shareholders within each company are the ones that are really holding the reins. Those shareholders and the board that represents them tend to have a real inertia to change. They would rather that you do the same old, same old and keep raking in profits from existing vehicles than spend lots of money on a change of direction, especially if some of the board are, as is often the case, old guard industry insiders who are distrustful of EVs. They also may eventually take steps to allow a transition to EVs if they see no other choice, but profit always comes first. And that brings me to a lack of preparedness in the industry. We've seen a gradual transition to EVs over the last 15 years, and you'd think that by now, automakers would have started to make steps to prepare for that transition. But all of the things I've already mentioned, plus the drive to keep Wall Street happy, has led to some pretty terrible decision-making and terrible preparedness. Some automakers are doing better than others, but few have had the forethought to truly lock down every part of the mineral supply chain they need to be immune to fluctuations in EV battery prices. And few have diverse supply chains that enable them to source the same thing from a variety of different suppliers in a variety of different countries so that if there is a war or a natural disaster and it affects one part of the supply chain, they can just keep producing anyway by shifting their suppliers. Right now, most automakers have multiple drivetrain and engine production facilities around the world for ICE vehicles that they either own or operate, and they have a healthy relationship with them. When the tsunami and earthquake of 2011 hit Japan, it took about a month or so for Japanese automakers to tweak their supply chains so that they could source parts and paint from different suppliers, and that enabled them to quickly resume production. That is not, however, the level of robustness that we are seeing in the EV world right now, except for maybe Tesla. Finally, let's look at the last big impacting factor for EV production, so-called market forces, or what I more commonly call economic factors. The world's economy is not in the best of health right now. Some countries are now deep into a recession, while others, technically not in recessions, are still fighting high interest rates. Here in the US, where this channel is based, inflation, while down from the highs of last year, is still making its presence felt, and interest rates are now at some of the highest we've seen in living memory. 
subprime auto loan defaults are at their highest point since the early 1990s, and vehicles that were once affordable to buyers just 12 months ago are now well beyond the reach, even though their overall sticker prices may have fallen and there are now more EV incentives existing to help lower effective prices. Moreover, there's an overall air of uncertainty among people that makes them think twice before buying a new car. Be it worries about getting laid off at work or an increase in rent, people have less disposable income today than they may have had in the past, and that's affecting new car sales. So there you have it. Automakers are slowing down their EV rollout. Even Tesla is noting that tough times lie ahead. And only one automaker seems to be pushing forward with plans right now to invest large amounts of money in EVs. Who is it? You're not going to believe this, but it's Toyota. It's just announced a multi-billion dollar investment in a battery production facility here in the US. Yep, that's right, Toyota. The company that's constantly bad mouthed EVs is now investing in EVs. Maybe that was its game all along. Wait for others to suffer pain and then jump in at the right time. But I'll tell you this, if it works out for Toyota, I think the entire industry has some tough lessons to learn.